Hi guys, welcome to the vlog and welcome to Saigon, also known as Ho Chi Minh City. We are now in the south of Vietnam, which is super exciting. And today, immediately, I went to get my uh, hair done, which was really exciting for me because it's my first time ever getting my hair dyed in a salon. And you can see I've got a lovely balayage done. Um, the salon name was Concept Coiffeur. I don't know how to pronounce it um, but you can see here the lady showing my before and after pictures my hair was really quite brassy before I've only ever box dyed my hair at home and now they've got it to a nice kind of ashy light brown uh, which is usually really hard to achieve for Asian hair uh, we go very very brassy so I was very happy with the result despite the bleach it was still quite healthy and bouncy curls as well which I loved and here I'm in my favorite place in the whole wide world Daiso <laughs> um, there was a Daiso in the north of Vietnam but it was really very very sad and um, depleted it was not really the Daiso you know at all I'll insert um, a link above if you want to have a look but this was the superstore uh, located in the department store that well the mall that the um, salon was close to um, so we popped in and had a look and to be honest um, I've shopped in Daiso so many times in Japan especially that I am able to not buy as much as I always do so it's still really interesting though because this store had so much stuff like it's huge super empty actually compared to Japan so really nice to shop in super clean and um, all together Ho Chi Minh City is such a different vibe and it's going to be a very different holiday to uh, what it was like in central and northern Vietnam which was a lot more traditional um, and you can see here I'm just showing off my hair I'm really so happy with it and it didn't cost very much at all the prices here are quite reasonable compared to the UK anyway I think in Vietnam standards it is expensive um, it cost me I think 120 pounds which um, not very cheap but I'm um, just to give context in the UK they quote me about 380 pounds to do the same thing and because they know Asian hair here I, I just felt like I was in good hands here we are in H&M so just doing a bit of a shop it's very different I'm telling you the holiday here is very different from what we've had for the rest of um, Vietnam so far we've had loads of nature and we're in you know really kind of old school traditional parts of town uh, Ho Chi Minh City um, is a lot more uh, metropolitan and um, city like um, but I like that too, it's good to get like a nice mix I feel like. So yes, I am just showing you my hair again. Guys, I was just so happy with it and I felt like the light basically in the other places didn't do it justice. But also just talking about the struggles of box dyeing over and over again and the kind of strips that it leaves in your hair. Um, every Asian girl will know the struggles at least once. So yes, I was really happy with the results and how soft it was. Uh, we basically came to the food court area of the same um, mall that we were in the same shopping center and um, there was actually lots to choose from like lots of hot pot like loads of choices lots of chains actually um, and we ended up choosing pepper lunch which if you've ever seen our hong kong vlogs you'll recognize a really super easy quick and cheap lunch option basically you kind of mix it's on a hot plate and you just kind of mix everything together and some of the meat won't be cooked yet depending on what you pick and then it will just kind of fry and sizzle and be all crispy and yummy on your plate and you can add your own sauces and things so it's a nice filling and easy uh, lunch option and then pretty much every time we see a cream puff stand it's really really hard to resist I think it's because we don't have any of these chains in the UK um, so this one is Beard Papa's and also there's one in Hong Kong called uh, Shu Creme which we've been to a few times as well it just looks so appealing and we were quite interested in this one you can see at the front here they had this cookie topped um, puff pastry um, kind of addition that we wanted to try because it looked really tasty so we got some of those to go for those of you who have seen some of my other vlogs, you know that I lost a lot of sound in my clips, but in the next clip, for some reason, I must not have plugged in my external mic, so there is some sound. 
Hi again, we just got out of our grab and Ted, I have no idea what the district was that we just went to. So Ted asked the, um, oh, drip, drip. Um, Ted just asked the taxi driver where we were just now, where he picked us up. And he said, uh, said it's where the expats live, it's where all the rich people live and it's district two. District two, so it's kind of like a built up area, lots of new houses. My salon was just full of expats, like it wasn't, any locals in the salon like they still do good hair but there was no locals um, we have come across the river now we've come to this market this market what is it called? it's called German Hand cool and it's kind of like a market that's open um, there's like a pipe that's like dripping on me um, it's a market that's open like day through to night it's right across the road there it looks like a big one full of random taps and souvenirs, my favorite. As if I haven't had enough coming from Daiso. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go across and meet the others now. Um, and yeah. Just say don't, I don't. Just say in English. Can you say ding? Ding, ding, ah. You say something like em kham noi ding ve. Em kham noi ding ve. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that's too much. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so I got the Saigon. Oh, there's a t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to like, learn a bit more Vietnamese from Ted and it's only taken like seven years and a trip to Vietnam to learn, you know, a couple of phrases. It's difficult, okay, it's very difficult. Mini durian. Well, this place is lively. Oh, let's get in. Flowers. Food. I don't remember where he said they were. Oh, he said meet back up at six. Back up? Yeah. I said it's like a huge mixture. Like souvenirs, food. It's pretty deep. Oh, he's deep. in where we please. Yeah. Everything's all mixed up, like I can't really it's like nuts and bags and like dried fruit and then ornaments and mugs. It's like everything's like all mixed up. I know I want some like um, dried fruit and things like that to bring home the like snacky bit. It's a lot. <laughs> we have met up with the others now and we are just crossing the bridge for the first time there is a bridge near our apartment and you can see obviously the river there's not much on the river but like you can kind of see in the distance like the lights there are a lot of lights though a lot of um, very cool looking skyscrapers <laughs> Yeah, we just finished at the market. We bought a bunch of t-shirts. Um, if you know the brand Patagonia, we bought some t-shirts that said Saigonia because they're in Saigon. I can show you, it actually looks kind of cool. Wait, cut. Yeah? You lost your mic. Oh. Oh, hi. Voice over choice is back. <laughs> Honestly, that mic, I'm really so mad that I never checked my audio. Lesson learned. Um, so we are actually at the top of our uh, rented apartment building so we went for a booking.com service department um, booking this time around instead of an Airbnb or a hotel and they've got this amazing pool up here which is still open at night and you can see this amazing like round view of um, the city twinkly lights very very pretty 
um, perfect for a midnight dip and especially because in Vietnam it is still quite warm at night so we're all in t-shirts it totally would have been possible uh, we didn't do it though well at least I didn't I don't know if anybody else did but we basically had a little walk around tour uh, we came to have a look at the gym which was downstairs as well so super nice facilities for sure One place that was on our list to check out on the first night was Bui Vien, uh, butchered that, um, but it's um, the famous Backpacker Street um, in Ho Chi Minh City, which is kind of uh, named similarly to the one in Thailand, I suppose. I've not been to that one, but um, in essence, it's where a lot of backpackers and tourists come to stay, and it's a lot where a lot of the nightlife is in um, the city and it's also home to the red light district so all of those things rolled into one so um, I'm not exactly the demographic for it I'm not a backpacker um, and I'm, I'm not really after any of those things we weren't gonna come for um, nightlife either tonight because we were just exhausted but we wanted to check it out anyway one of my weird irrational fears is basically getting burned by um, a motorbike. It's an irrational fear because when Ted was younger he somehow burned the back of his leg on maybe the exhaust pipe or whatever the hot part of a motorbike is when he was riding on it in Vietnam so I'm like terrified it's going to happen to me when the bikes get too close. It's probably not going to happen but you can see here it's super crowded like people and the driving space everything is all together and there are loads of street performers on the road just kind of um, they, they want you to go watch and then they, they come and ask you for money so got to be wary of those in case some of the performers are a bit more aggressive and they you know you've heard of all the scams in the cities um, we came by a random skewer shop um, on the side of the street as per Vietnamese style and um, just got some roasted meat skewers um, as a late night snack um, they are they were okay they were nothing special but um, you know we we got we got our fix so after a short-lived visit to the backpacker street we are in front of the anti-drama drama club waiting for our grab taxi um, to karaoke we decided we were done with backpacker street nothing left for us here um, and to move on now we have a bit of an alternative room here <laughs> we're standing on the seating. The seating is here. So this whole room is um, seating. Yeah, it's like Japanese uh, sushi seating. This is a medium room. It's got one, quite a big one. So we need to use these pillows. So the karaoke here is really really cheap, um, we couldn't have paid more than a couple pounds total but you had to kneel down to pick all your songs so we were like crouching there and thankfully no audio you can't hear me singing. <laughs> just like that the end of the vlog i don't usually voice over my end boards but here you go and thank you for watching hope to see you in my next one bye guys <laughs>